president of the Ghana League Clubs Association, Mr. Kujo Fiano, and one person who really, uh, you know, uh, identifies with this idea of the Championship of African Nations has just, just joined us in the studio. Uh, thank you very much, uh, President, for your time. <laughs> uh, it's always a pleasure to be here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I am sure. a chairman. We have so you many presidents. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so you are a chairman. <laughs> yeah, just want to be a chairman. <laughs> okay, we have to be. We have to. Uh, you know, we have to uh, be very clear, especially when uh, you know you are seated with the president. And uh, the president attended the last uh, competition put together uh, by yeah. Darko. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, I'm. I, I do remember that you had some conversations around getting the presidency to support our leagues. We'll we, we get. We'll get down to all of those conversations here. And of course, we'll zoom in on you know Ghana and our chances in this opening game of the ongoing uh, championship of African nations. But just sure. before uh, we get down to that conversation, let's uh, touch a bit on esports. Now, esports is a phenomenon that is catching on like wildfire and uh, is establishing itself greatly. Now, there are uh, loads and loads of champions who uh, you know have woven their way around you know, various uh, esports competitions, especially uh, the football, you know, element. Do remember that Joy Sports some years ago organized a special esports tournament. And interestingly, uh, the number one goalie of uh, the Black Galaxy, uh, you know, <laughs> Ibrahim Dunlad, beat his Accra Hearts of Oak counterpart, you know, um, uh, you know, Richard Atta to it and won, won uh, that competition. So it's very interesting that uh, today, uh, a tournament that started over a week ago is wrapping up uh, at the Accra Mall. And of course, the Accra Mall has had a wing of, for esports, especially for esports. And uh, it's attracted loads and loads of uh, FIFA 2023 uh, players. Okay, so um, the cash prize at stake is 20,000 20, Ghana cities. Gosh, <laughs> that's a very good money, uh, especially if you don't have to wear any boots and you have to use your fingers to, you know, pretend like you are, uh, you know, playing the game and playing it better than Cristiano Ronaldo and Lionel Messi. Well, uh, let's get on the phone line and speak to uh, Maximus Ametogo, who is the, um, who is representing the uh, Ghana Esports Association. Uh, thank you very much, Maximus, and uh, Happy New Year to you. Yeah, good, good. Yes. Good morning. Thank you very much. It's actually afternoon. <laughs> yeah, it's actually afternoon. All right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Look, yeah, um, we're it's, almost done with our setup at the mall. Very so well, very well. Look, it's, ready, it's, yeah. it's, it's been a long journey uh, that esports yes. has traveled. We remember the collaborations that Joy Sports had had with you over the years. And we do realize right. that it is also, uh, you know, a latent market that has many numbers of, of people who are, are great at putting their teams together and, and playing uh, the game virtually. Tell me about how competition has gone and the kind of talent you've seen amongst the players, uh, you know, for this very big competition. Yeah, great. So it's, it's been very intense and very competitive. We, we had the top players in Ghana playing uh, for the ultimate, ultimate prize in 12 different games, right? And then currently we are doing the girls in Jamie at the Yetra Esports Stadium inside Accra Mall. So they are playing their qualifiers and then they can't play the grand finals at the, the full court. So it's been very exciting. It's very intense, and and the players are, are really ready for this evening's grand finals. Okay, now um, you know, I want I want you to tell me about you know what what you discovered with this particular uh, you know year putting together the tournament this year about le the levels of interest you know amongst people for for esports especially, you know, the FIFA element of eSports? Yeah, you know, some of us have been in this space for almost nine years. So consolidating the whole sector with the, the Accra eSports Week was very exciting for the community because now they are seeing that, okay, they were building some leverage for the uh, visibility for, for the ecosystem. So they are very excited and they are training very hard. Some of the top players, in fact, they were beaten on the, at the group stages, so they are not even in the quarterfinals to the semifinals. So <laughs> it's been very interesting. And the players, trust me, are very happy that we are, we are partnering with Accra Mall and we are bringing the event to the public so people can see, you know, the hidden community of gamers in Ghana who will come and compete for the ultimate prize. Um, tell me about you know those who are interested in becoming champions in esports and becoming specialists and and you know and uh, unbeatable at it there are loads and loads of people especially uh, the younger folk who 
are looking forward to sitting behind their screens and, you know, putting their respective teams together and drawing the formations, you know, playing just like the way we see our players play in the biggest leagues in the world and on stages like the FIFA World Cup? Yeah, I think the young people, they should, they should pass by. They should come and see what the guys in the industry are already doing and then how they can learn from them. They are the, they are, they are the future. And we know that the esports industry is quite huge because the video gaming, as we simply call it, is bigger than movie and music and streaming times two. So it's quite huge. And there are potentials there. There are universities giving scholarships for students who are esports athletes. Uh, last year, we sent players to Bali, Indonesia, and then Istanbul in Turkey to compete in esports uh, games to represent Ghana. And Commonwealth Games, of course, there was esports to there last year. So the, the space is becoming bigger, wider, and a lot of opportunities are there. Parents should encourage their children who have interest in video gaming to be able to do it, and they should pass by and see what is happening. 20,000 Ghana cities going to the winner. What's going to be the itinerary for today? Yeah, so that's the, that's the pot price for for the various games that we've played. So okay, great, great. So we are spreading the money yeah. across but the But you various, see, uh, the reason why second, I'm saying that... Second, yeah, but yeah. reason why I'm saying that is that you know the way the dollar has been going back and forth. If you hear <laughs> accumulated 20,000, it's always good to hear. <laughs> yeah, <exactly. laughs> It's quite exciting. So the players, they are ready because they want to win the cash prize. We normally play, play sometimes for bragging rights, but we want to give them the opportunity to win cash prizes. We have organized other tournaments before and the pot prices are equally bigger like this one. So, of course, the cash is there. They, are not, they didn't register to play. So, they should, they should just do their best and win it. All right. Maximus, thank you so much. And um, we're going to catch up with you. We'll bring, uh, you know, some of our viewers, some of the images on our shows during the week of how everything went at the mall today. All the nice best with And then, of course, big ups to multimedia and... Uh, and the, the, the whole crew at the my Joy, Joy Online, uh, Joy Prime, and all the other uh, Brands. media channels and other mm -hmm. uh, multimedia for supporting this very initiative. Great, great, great stuff. All right, yeah. Maximus, thank you so much, and uh, we you wish too. you the best. All right. Maximus Ametogo is representing the Ghana Esports Association. Uh, they're putting together a tournament that has a cumulative uh, prize or, uh, 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 you know, Max, maximum prize of 20,000 Ghana cities amongst uh, eight different uh, disciplines uh, within esports. Wow, isn't that amazing? Well, uh, let's uh, turn the attention now to one uh, chronic problem in our Premier League, which is the highest height of organized competition in our domestic football. That will start off the conversations here on the Joy Sports Link. Uh, some bites from uh, action from uh, our Premier League, which is now the Bet Par Premier League. And of course, um, I mean, I was doing a little review of uh, the big moments that we saw. And I, I was even doing, you know, a go through of the still pictures, some of the very interesting still pictures, you know, that we saw. I mean, I remember one of, I think it was uh, Banye of Accra Hatsavo kissing, uh, you know, his partner you know, through the, through the glass, you know, that separates the inner perimeter from the stands. An amazing shot. There's also one of Richard Atta uh, in this very, very uh, daring, uh, you know, position mid-air. You know, all of these are moments that, uh, you know, make us cherish the local product or the homegrown product of our competitive football. But now uh, it's been brought to the fore that we have a problem to deal with. While we talk about this problem, we're looking forward to having solutions. The reason why we're bringing all those, uh, as we always do here on the Joy Sports Link, who are in the center of these big conversations uh, to be here with us. But do remember that Bet365 is now officially live in Ghana. And if you love your sports, then which better way to get uh, the action than just joining? Bet across a range of markets and, uh, you know, in all the biggest sporting disciplines and build your own personalized bet with a bet builder by selecting popular markets. You can also make up to 12 sections with a single match. Enjoy all of your favorite sporting events and access thousands of games with uh, live streaming as well. You can place your bets before the match kicks off or try in-play betting during the live game. Remember, Bet365 also lets you cash out or bet early uh, on selected markets. Sounds good, right? Okay. 
So visit the official site. It's bet365.com.gh and just join. It's for over 18s only. Terms and conditions Enjoy. apply. And remember to gamble responsibly. And also, I'll tell you about how you can get to see your best football stars live in Europe as the UEFA Champions League kicks off this February. Uh, it's a couple of weeks away. So, Match Experience Hospitality AG, who are the official uh, rights holders for the 2022-23 Champions League, are making this possible uh, for these hospitality packages which come with match tickets, flights, and accommodation. So, just follow your favorite club as they progress through the stages uh, all the way to the finals in Istanbul and Turkey uh, in June or in summer. And will Real Madrid win the Champions League for a record 15th time? Well, if you do not support Real Madrid like I do, you'd say a big no. But hey, uh, the, <laughs> the Los Blancos fans are all over the place and they'll disagree with me. Do you fancy Messi, Neymar or Mbappe uh, combining to triumph as well? Or will Pep Guardiola and the citizens do that very first one? Well, how far will the pride of London? Chelsea! I'm talking about the Blues. <laughs> how far will they go in this tournament with all their troubles? Well, just call Match Experience Hospitality AG on 055-155-1118 or 055-155-1119 to reserve your booking or email your inquiries to sales at matchhospitality.com and uh, match ticket inclusive hospitality packages are subject to availability. All you have to do is to ensure that you're booking right now pick up your phone get on your you know your browser and uh get right there and book secure your booking to avoid any disappointments so much experience hospitality ag you have to cheer like a boss all right so it brings us to the start of this big conversation and i'd like to first of all introduce uh the initiator of all of these and uh, he is the head of insurance sports here at the multimedia group uh, in charge of our operations in the garden city and the ashanti region uh Brito Uspempa, whom we refer to as ayala uh, has joined us virtually thank you very much ayala uh, for your time um thank you very much also for having me Nat. Mm, great 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 look um I, I want to get into your mind now we uh, we, we have a show here called Sunday Edition, which gets close to uh, the journalists and digs into their minds and the thought processes and uh, the physical steps that were taken to do some of the big stories. This definitely uh, has been a big story that all of us have pushed greatly. Uh, question is, what was the striking factor for you? I'm sure that all of us are aware of this problem, but there was something, that one element that struck you to go ahead on this campaign of filling the stands again what was it okay so i realize there is a, a bit of a freeze there we'll try to re-establish contact with uh you know uh bright uh, and then we can continue the conversation but let me come here in the studio uh mr fianu thank you so much uh it's it's great to have you and and once again we'd like to extend our condolences to you uh you had to uh, bury your wife uh, sometime last year it was a very very tough period and uh, as a friend uh, to the station and to the group who would like to extend our heartfelt condolences to you. Yeah, thank uh, you, thank yeah, you very yeah, much. Yeah. Sure, uh, sure, sure. I appreciate mm. that support mm. and uh, encouragement. That saw me through those uh, trying moments. But mm. life must go on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, so, so you know, I'm, I'm sure you, you sit at the helm and you look at what uh, the clubs are going through mm. and, and now this problem again. I mean, we saw what was a steady decline. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I did not need uh, anybody to tell me that uh, things are not going well with uh, spectatoring uh, because uh, Galka is a beneficiary of what comes out of the gates. So when you start seeing the figures, especially from Accra Kumasi, where you had Olympics playing House of Folk in Accra, and Kotoko also engaging in some very, very interesting uh, pairings. So it was becoming a bit worrying. So I, I decided to take uh, the opportunity by attending the National Congress of Kotoko Supporters Union in Second D. And when I got there, it took us more than two hours to even get a quorum for the Congress to take off. So I started asking, is it this that vibrant uh, Kotoko supporters, the circles, yeah. struggling to form a quorum at, an, at a national congress. And even at a the time they formed a uh, quorum, 
the attendant. Kodoko has about 200 and something circles. But the attendance was below 100. So I started wondering what was at stake. So I tried to put my ears on the ground to find out exactly what is going wrong with our football. And I picked a lot, uh, some information, and I think that these are the things we need to work on. Because if you don't know what's wrong with you, you don't get the cause, finding the solution becomes uh, a challenge. So it is really appalling uh, when you see what is happening at, uh, at our stadium. And I believe that together, the, we cannot leave the media out. So I'm not surprised Ayala has taken up this mantle and we will all support him uh, for the program to become a success. Because football strives on fatigue. We, we all saw what happened in Qatar. They did not have the numbers as a country. But the fans poured in to make the whole thing exciting. We have the, 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 the fan zones. So if you are playing a game and there are no fans, how do you even organize fan zones? And supporters have a bigger role to play. I don't want to go into the economics of it because it, it, is, it is obvious. Uh, I think last season, House of Folk and Kotoko played uh, a cliffhanger in um, Accra. Yeah. And House of Folk, that was the highest gate proceed so far. And uh, just being moderate with the figures, Accra House of Folk raked in close to 60,000 US dollars. So if you compare 60,000 US dollars. Yeah, so if you compare that to even the title sponsorship of the league, that should tell you that if you add some few more matches to that, the supporters will end up being the highest uh, or doling at the highest sponsorship uh, for the club. So, without the spectators, definitely uh, clubs will struggle to survive. I have been a chief executive before, and we have our cocoa, or we have our harvest days. Those harvest days are when you play Kotoko and has at home. But looking at the trend, uh, it is a far cry from what we've seen a couple of uh, years ago. But the question is, what, what is what is the cost? You talked about some pictures. Hitherto, you needed just a story in graphic sports or uh, sporting times. Joe Debra and Shamokui, who is who? And whether Accra or Kumasi, the stadium will be full. So we need to find out what actually uh, has gone wrong that this time we are not getting the supporters. Yes, times are rough. Uh, moving from home to the stadium, you come ticketing, taking transport back. But you, we had those challenges in the past, but people were still coming to yeah, the Yeah, I've I come to the point because, yeah. you know, um, having uh, like a television broadcast partner, for instance, it's not the first time we're having it, yeah. but we, we were drawing some very good numbers as well. So, um, you know, uh, we'll be getting on the phone line and, and also having a conversation with Mr. Elvis Herman Hesse, who is the, uh, you know, who is the uh, head of the chapters, the chairman of the uh, National Chapters Committee of Accra Hearts of Oak, so that he can also let us into what it is that really is happening on, uh, you know, on the supporters' front uh, when it comes to the, you know, when it comes to following the club, the club that they want to perform so so well, the club that they also sometimes, you know, uh, criticize so great. So, uh, you know, it's it's. <laughs> it's just amazing. And and one of the other things I do realize is that there are some factors, I mean, some factors, alternative entertainment factors that seem yes. to be pulling yes. the fans yes. away from the stadium. Yes. That, that is one. Uh, now you can sit in the comfort of your home and watch some of the good games in Europe. So you ask yourself, do I have to, for instance, living in Tema, do I have to drive all the way to a Crasper Stadium to watch this? But... This is our own, as the jingle says. Mm, mm, this is mm. there, there's no place like place like home. In as much as you support a foreign club, there is a, a, a local club that you support more than that uh, foreign club. So, since charity begins at home, I think that uh, in as much as we have those other entertainments, mm. uh, the EPL, for instance, 
<laughs> knowing Ghanaians, we don't joke with our funerals on Saturdays and at times on Sundays. But we, you see, I'm trying to wrap my head and pinpoint exactly because we were having all these challenges in the past, but we're still filling the stadium. So uh, maybe having heard from, after we hear from Hesse, yeah. mm. I have spoken to uh, Mr. Demanya, mm. Mm. Uh, who is in charge of Kumasi Asante Kotoko. And I was so happy when I saw Hesse uh, yeah. at the Kotoko uh, Congress. So being the leadership, they can also uh, help a bit. Because I, what I, I also picked was management supporters relationship. Management supporters relationship. You hear supporters saying, oh, so I see team in India. Mm. Or the team is his. Let him, let him take it. But one other thing we need to understand, there, there's a vast difference between one being a football fan and being a supporter. Not when do I need support? I need the support when I'm down. So it is not only when uh, things are rosy. Things are rosy. Then you you are becoming a fair weather friend. You must be with me, thick and thin, like one uh, as politician usually uh, used to say on on, on air. Say he is saying that, but I will use club. I will not use party. Your club, whether good or bad, in good times or in bad times, you need to stick to it. Because that is what you have. Be a phobian, being a fabu, being an agosu. It's so refreshing. So you don't wait until, yes, at times it's good when your team is winning. The motivation is there. But when it comes to support, it is when the team is down. It is when the team is struggling mm. that we need our supporters around us. I want us to also get into the element of how these support groups even spring up in the first place and the thought behind having them. So uh, let me start with, with, with uh, I'll start with a personal example. So my late father, Dr. Victor Atto, um, was, a, was a director of Accra Hearts of Oak on different legs. Um, he was a club's doctor as well. So um, if you look at us, the children who grew up here in Ghana, our inclination is clearly towards Accra Hearts of Oak. My eldest brother, who now lives in Australia, is a Swan Hearts fan. And interesting thing is that because he's light-skinned, he's half-caste, as we like to <laughs> refer to it informally, um, he gets to the stadium, and these guys who are around the cemetery and all of that, they park his car, they wash it for him, they all know him. Okay, So this is from a family tradition. Now, I'm also looking at the element of growing, having our clubs have a community element, because there are... Uh, you know, suggestions that have come that we always need to identify that community element of our of our club so that people from a certain geographical area can identify with the club. I do remember, you know, the likes of Okweu United back in the time who will fly their yellow yellow and white flags. Yellow, right? white and orange. Uh, yeah, yellow, white and orange flags, you know, in town when they are they are playing. Obviously relating to the Kweu area in the eastern region of Ghana. But do we, I mean, you look at all of our 18 clubs and you're asking yourself, are we, do we have that element or are the clubs making an effort to have that identity and that element with communities and geographical areas? Uh, you are right. Uh, at a point in time, we started losing that traditional touch. Okay. When companies started venturing into football, mm. you have food complex, complex stars. Yeah. You have Dumas, you have, but... The most of the traditional clubs prevailed and stayed on. We need to get back to our roots uh, Joy, because, as Raji said, I met a gentleman, and what he said was that he lived in London. Yeah, and he said any time he came home, he opened a letterbox and an invitation card from a second division club in the locality. I see. He saw it first. He threw it away. The following week, they brought another invitation. So his children said this was a letter. A letter were, okay. inviting him I see. to just come and watch a game. So his kids, he had two sons. They saw the invite. They said, ah, Daddy, we want to go to the stadium. So he arranged one weekend. And uh, when the, the entire family, including the wife, when they arrived at the car park, the hierarchy of the club, we're waiting for them. Usher them into the lobby. 
as usual, some refreshment. They went and sat down and watched the game. When they got home, the whole week was about the match attendance at the stadium. Wow. And it got to a point, the family was always looking forward. It got to a point, they all registered to be members. And his children remain supporters of that club until it got extinct. You see? So we need to come back. And I went to his office and he was saying that his office is around the Ridge Enclave. Mm. Sitting there, you could see the Crasport Stadium yeah. from there. Okay. And he told me, Tofiano, where I sit, I could see the Crasport Stadium. I have, I, 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 I support a local club. And at times I sit down and I, I ask, so when will I receive a, an invite or something? And because he became a member of that club in, in, in UK, he started paying subscription. He started paying subscription at the end of every month. And he was expecting something to come from us. So I think that we also have to reach out. We also have to reach out. There are people there who want to support, but we need to reach out. And that trend, we also saw another trend where we started seeing philanthropists, individuals coming to own clubs. In the past, you hear B.K. Dusay, the little Dusay. Sure. He came in not to form his own club, but to run a commercial and the club. H.P. Jemite, he had all it takes to have his own club, but a class of folk. The Quashis, Azakis. Then you come to the Alabis Olympics. They could own clubs, but they supported the traditional clubs. But because most of the people who should have continued with that trend decided to own clubs. Moses Paka is a die in the who has of folk. Now there is a new emerging club, so clubs coming out. When you look at the ownership, you see some traces of uh, Kumasi Asante Kotoko. So I think we need to go back to the drawing board, make sure that we build these traditional clubs. And for real for us, they are dying by the day. It's, it's a shame to see as Sakene Hazakes in 11 wise in second division. What, what will it be to have those derbies at the Jendu or Esipong? Um, Sekedi Azakes, Sekedi 11 wise. Now, before Kwatano and B United are in Division 1. Even when they were in Division 1, they were pulling the crowd. But of late, they've also started playing in empty stairs. So we need to get back and see how we can remold these traditional clubs. So that, Because look at what is happening, Doma. The last time they played, until supporters see the clubs as their own, as coming from their enclave. Once a while, you see somebody moving from, from Accra, supporting Kotoko. Somebody in Kumasi supporting. But the, the, the base of Accra is Accra. The base of Kotoko is Kumasi. But if we are still having challenges, our people are not watching the games, I think that uh, it is for us as the connoisseurs of the game to ensure. And uh, uh, Nat, we also have. I'm, I'm talking about the media. Mm. You are the mirror of the society. Okay. And we cannot take yourselves out of uh, what we are going through currently. Okay. Because L let, let me let me uh, let me let, let's get into this further. Um, let's begin from the element of support because I do remember that during the week we had you know we put a few. Um, statistics that uh, Bismarck Usu Bempa Ayala, you know, um, put out, you know, through his research and through starting off this project, uh, specific numbers where some clubs ended up with 60 Ghana cities, figures as low as 60 Ghana cities. And the uh, question you're asking yourself is, okay, so one, one person put a post be below one of the, uh, one of the posts that I, I did, and, and he said, look, you guys in the media are part of the problem because... You're here always talking about the ills of the game. And because of that, you know, it, where, what's your assessment generally 
of what you see in terms of our output, you know, in the media when it comes to how we're how we're positioning the domestic. Media. Yes, I always want to cite examples. Okay. When I was in Obuasi, yeah, there was this Easter holiday, and the FM stations in Obuasi. We have three. At the time, we had three radio stations in Obuasi, and then we have one in Dunkwa. So these four radio stations decided to organize a competition amongst them. And you open the, your radio from morning to evening, it was that competition. Okay. And on the day of the event, Glenclay was filled to the brim. I see. Yes. It was there I realized that if the media really commits itself to something and they want to do it, the results will be there for everybody to see. Those four radio stations, I could not remember when Ash Gould and even Kotoko filled Lenklin. But that event, by the four, just a holiday kick about. You see, that magic, and I think that we should also reach out to the media. We should see media, the media as partners so that we don't antagonize them. We need them as much as they need us. Because from that event, we were not used to Valentine's Day as Ghanaians. But when the media took it up, we were not used to International Mother's Day or something. Mother's Day, yeah. Mother's Day. yeah. And International Women's Day. Women's Day. <laughs> <laughs> if Joy <laughs> is committed to doing something, there is also be there. And, and I do remember, uh, Mr. Fianua, I remember very well the uh, the coining of Super Clash for, you know, it originated from here. Yes. So myself and as Cranting, um, you know, Tony Bebley, I mean, Enes led the team at yeah. the time, um, Tony Bebley, Redwan Ibrahim Asante, and, and the like. I mean, uh, we all came together, put our heads together, and we coined that, you know, term for the, you know, because we're saying Derby de Madonina yeah. in Italy, we're saying, uh, you know, El Clasico yeah. in Spain. Now, in our, in our game, we need to look for one. And Super Clash now has become an, an established name for Hearts versus, versus Kotoko. And it was all because of the sustained build-up that we did here. Uh, that, I mean, that day, I even uh, was having issues, you know, entering the stadium around 11 a.m. Yes, yes. So, so you, are, you are right in there, and I'm, I'm not surprised that Ayala uh, has taken up this mantle. As I said, we all have to support him. Not you just you just you just give it a try. Let's even pick a game or two and devote enough time to it. Let's draw people's mind to it. We'll, we'll, they, 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 they'll be there. It is if the media uh, places uh, uh, a blackout on you, <laughs> you are in trouble. It's like lighting the candle and putting it under a bucket. So you are the mirror of society. Look at the media hype around the World Cup. It's, 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 at times, you even love to stay at home. Just to listen to some of so, And when you are kicked, nobody stops you from going to the stadium. So the media has a big role to play. Yes, we will be doing the wrong things. We are not saying that. Don't. But if you overplay it, if they overplay it, people definitely, nobody will want to be associated with a, big, a bad product. And that, that, that puts a very thin line between the two. Uh, committing yourself to promoting and at the same time wanting to put authority on their toes so that the right things are done. And here you are doing all of these stories, for instance, around officiating, around these controversies with player movements and all of that. And now we're, we're also supposed to balance it with, with promotion. It puts us in a very yeah. tight space. It, 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 I agree with you, but then there must be a way out. Mm. Hear that too. Somebody could stray on the field of play and you see the cameras following that person. If that person is going to end up at the police station, you see the cameras following that person right from the act, maybe, maybe even up to the police station. But what do we see in Europe now? As soon as it's done, a total blackout on that person who's straight onto the field, 
Because if those things are overplayed, something like that happened in Ghana, somebody strayed into one of the Black Star matches. We spent, the match was played in 90 minutes, but we spent days in talking about that event. You see? So we should, all, we are, I'm not saying that football administrators or those in authority should not be uh, put in check. But there is this saying that too much of everything. These things can be done, get the results, not necessarily overblowing it. Because nobody will want to be associated with. So as football connoisseurs, we also have a duty to clean our stables. So and that's that one thing the, uh, the FA president was very uh, passionate and vocal about uh, during the last Congress in, in Pram Pram, where he said that he doesn't see the clubs you know pushing and uh you know pushing their weight when it uh, when it comes to uh pulling their weight sorry yeah, when it we, comes we, to we, we have a long way to go um uh, i remember my days in uh ashanti gold ashanti gold oh. i will leave the house as early as 6 a.m just to make sure that all pitch panels are fixed so that my sponsors will not come and say that the right thing is not being done you see we we you sit behind the television set the ambience, even around the stadium, is an attraction. You come to us, most of, some of the venues, the pitch panels, some are even turned upside down. The ambience. You see, you want to have a beautiful wife. You don't go there in tattered clothes. Clear, clean your environment. Let it be nice. How much is it going to take you to to put two or three pig panels for your for your your your, your sponsors just to so that anybody who enters the stadium will realize that yes a football match is being played the other one also is that the environment in the stadium when you attend some of these uh, big matches outside there are other things that are done hmm. in addition to it's interesting. I, I'm just getting this message from uh, Mrs. K. Bentiencho. Um, she, she, her specialty uh, is, uh, you know, is personal grooming, okay. and you know, she's a seasoned beautician, okay. and you know, and she says, uh, "Nut, I'm, I'm sorry, but uh, there are many factors for the low support for the local games. However, I was so disappointed when I went to the stadium for the first, the very first time to watch uh, the Legends last year, and the washrooms were horrible." This was such a put off to me. So uh, we also we've also talked about, and, and in terms of uh, the marketability, yeah. that um, the more uh, female fans we see at the stadia, the better our chances of recording bigger numbers. Yeah. Because on a relative scale, uh, football, uh, the first port of call for football is is male fans, and so if um, we're we're doing something that is bringing the extra, which is the female yeah. fans, then it means we're doing something yeah. right. But here we are, there are people who are getting attracted, they get there, and they get put off. I, I, I cannot agree more with uh, Madam. I've said this thing a couple of times. Uh, that you go to some of the stadia, ordinary washrooms are not there. And uh, if we, the men, and I, I'm talking about some premier division centers, mm. and if the SWAT president uh, is listening, mm. I think we had that bad um, experience when we uh, watch a game, one of the Premier League games uh, around the countryside. That shouldn't be. The comfort of the fans is also very, very paramount. You ask yourself, uh, the people of uh, Dansomashu, forgive me, you go to uh, Dansoman Stadium, Karendov, and nature calls you should tell me where you where? have run to yeah Karen of. nowhere and nowhere yeah uh even the crash stadium where those facilities are you prefer to either keep it or have a a free range than going in there so we have a lot and even some of the playing pitches 
the surface. You see some of them on television, and you ask yourself whether the match is being played somewhere, uh, somewhere else than in Ghana. So we have a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of work to do, but I will continue to cut the support of the media. Let's give it a try. Let the media, let's, let's support our brother. Let's support him. And we'll see. The results will be there for everybody to see. Well, if you're joining us, we're here on the Joy Sports Link on Joy 99.7 FM. We're having a domestic conversation today. Um, you know, irrespective of your age, what is it that will get you to go and watch a game in our league? What is it that will draw you away from a game in our league or uh, draw your interest away from a game in our league on a weekend? Uh, what are the factors? Send me a message on 055-11-11997. 055-11-11997. We're tackling, uh, you know, the bottom or the root of, uh, you know, this problem of dwindling numbers in our stance, which now becomes, uh, you know, very difficult or a bit of a cringe when you have to even announce some of the figures that are realized by our clubs. All right. So um, we would get uh, the, the reactions of some of our fans. And then after that, we'll, th we'll take the thoughts of our initiator, who is uh, now rejoined as uh, Bismarck Usubempa Ayala uh, yeah, there on, on, on Zoom. You know, we have players like Chastela and Ku. They are very, very aggressive on football. So people are happy to go and see those players. But today, we don't have, those, we don't have that kind of players again. We didn't one year. We want to hear this player that, oh, he's trying to do his best. The next year, he's gone at the early age. So, it's not, uh, the, now he's not making Ghana football attractive. Because those days, you know, we have players like Chastela and Ku. They are very, very aggressive on football. So people are happy to go and see those players. But today, we don't have, those, we don't have that kind of players again. We didn't want yet. We want to hear this player that, oh, he's trying to do his best. The next year, he's gone at the early age. So it's not uh, that now it's not making Ghana football attractive. So team no so kura ne ball no mo bon. Enya papa kwato kwane ha se no. Wo mo ya players ye ni ball bo na nka so mo fo mo. Wo mo kwofe fa nkrofobia o mo ni ball bo. Eti kwato kwako kura ne ko bo ball ne ha se. Ni ashe ha. Ana kwato kon so ashe. Ha se na ha se so ashe kwato ko. E me game ne nya dia na first no ana wo mo fa ayi mo. E do mo ye e do mo bo ball no. Na ball no ye ni kan ya ma kura no. Ye che sa kwato ko ko bo ball wa. Eh. Those days, you know, we have players like. I'm saying, say, komo omo omo di dino. That is the plan. Say, likely, say by by January the. there was uh, Henry Asanti Chum, who is the uh, communications director of the Ghana Football Association, also wading into the conversation there. You heard my lovely fans of Kumasi. Don't you just love the fans from Kumasi? You see, reason why I love them is that I'm an Accra fan, but you know, sometimes when you, uh, you, know, you go to the stadium, you, you do the comparison and you realize that in terms of the fanatism, in terms of the love, it's, it's bigger, it's on a bigger scale in Kumasi. I'll now bring in uh, uh, Bismarck Osubempa Ayala. Um, maybe you should add the Ayala to your passport. You know, your Ghana card should have the Ayala because now it's becoming, you know... Uh, you do know that Rex Omar was Rexford Ousumafo, but now he's, uh, you know, gazetted it. So he just gazetted it, Charlie. It's, it's your name now. Anyway, uh, congratulations on, 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 on that, uh, you know, that project. Okay, so I was asking you earlier about the, the factor, the, the, the final pinch factor that got you to start this 
Um, thank you very much, Inati, and um, I'm sorry for, for the delays. You see, what got my attention on this subject was I came to realize that when we were growing up, one of the biggest attributes to Kotoko and Haas were the fans. So when any team is visiting Haas or folk, one of the things the team must deal with will be the crowd at the Accra Sports Stadium it, and how intimidating that would be when you are coming to play Kotoko at the Barbara Sports Stadium. Uh -huh. One of the things you have to deal with coming from a small town is the, 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 the crowd that you have to deal with as the players and their quality. You have to deal with some intimidating crowd that you've never I seen mean, in your life man, before. Would you like so I started Remember telling my colleagues from... that, look, if I am a player of baby any good stars now, I think I am more comfortable playing at the Barbara Sports Stadium against Kotoko than playing at the dance park in front of my supporters. Because when I go to the Barbara Sports Stadium, it's eventually like I'm playing in an empty stadium without no intimidation. And when I am going up, I will not really understand in the past when my father used to tell me, if you want to be a professional footballer, the day you will go to Barbara Sports Stadium to miss Kotoko, the crowd alone can make you lose the game. So I started making the point to my friends and people I talk football with that the, 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 the good old Kotoko crowd and the good old Accra Hasoko crowd is now becoming a disadvantage because Kotoko fans and their players will go to, let's say, in Swatshemai, in Swatshe, and they will go and face an intimidating crowd there. But when they come to their own stadium, as big as they are, they don't have the crowd again to intimidate their opposition. Then I came to also realize that no, this issue goes more deeper. And it's not an issue of Kotoko and Haas. But even when you go to these centers where you may think that the supporters are already there, like the Bechim, like Bebeni, like Insuatremai, like Adriana, and all the other centers, the crowd and the spectatorship keeps dwindling. And it means the problem is general. So I came to understand, look, if we sit down as journalists and as stakeholders, and we don't really do anything about it. What we are going to establish with our football is that what we call the passion of the nation because of the public interest in football is going to win away. And without public interest, what can you do with football? I remember those days when, because of COVID, we had to play football behind closed doors. It was as if it's not football that you are watching. So football without public interest, football without spectators following the game, and football without spectators at the stadium. It is a soulless human being. And that caught my attention to start this positive campaign out. Hello, Nat. Hello? Right One thing I've also realized was uh, management supporters relation. 
I, you know, as I do in the past, that mm. anytime Kotoko uh, has played in Kumasi, and they get to Kumasi, is it chapter 9? I forgot. The, when they get to Kumasi, it is the responsibility of the chapters in Kumasi to host the club. So you see the supporters' involvement in the pre match uh, arrangements and everything. Now, when I went to uh, uh, second D, what I told the Kotoko supporters, I wasn't talking to Kotoko supporters alone, but all the supporters who are supporting the club at like that. Management will come. I mean, once a while, maybe once in a decade, that you hear a supporter saying, for this and that and that reason, I've crossed carpet. But uh, supporters are supporters. They are always there. Too thick and thin. So, it is not uh, the, the management or the board. As for them, they will come and go. You, sp you spoke about Harry Zako. Why is Harry Zako now? He's no more the champion chairman. But the supporters are there. So, we should mm. not think about this man or that man, his style of management, what he's doing, what I, I am not doing. So, I'll stay off. Mm. It is a club that will suffer. Now, um, it's, it's, it's interesting, and I'm going to bring uh, Bismarck in in a second. But, uh, Mr. Fiano, it's interesting you mentioned relationships between managements and the fans. Uh, what we were discussing off-air was, was that of Mr. Hariza Kaur, former chairman of Accra Hearts Vogue, who had this special pastime or this special moment that he used to share with the leadership of the National Chapters Committee. They used to eat kenke and crabs with ground pepper every Saturday morning. But well, Furenwako was doing the same thing in the past. Yeah, and for, and, for and and for some reason, uh, these people felt so attached and so responsible to uh, you know to always move the supporters front to support the man, and that was his style back then. What are administrators doing? We now? we we need to do those things. We need to recognize the supporters. Mm. When I was in Ashgold, the slot that we had to take us to South Africa, yeah, we gave it to our NCC chairman. No management member went to South Africa. It was our NCC chairman who traveled to South Africa for because the for the World Cup. Yeah, because they play a pivotal role. In, the, in when we started this conversation, I said, if you have your supporters filling the stadium, you don't even look at the sponsorship that, that will come from GFA, because you are assured of a, a, a regular inflow in your accounts. And mm. those of us who are playing uh, outside Accra Kumasi. Our, our our bumper harvests are made when we play Kotoko and Haas. If I if Kotoko, if I owe you, I will tell you, I'll look at the fixtures. Can you see me on Tuesday after playing Kotoko or Haas? Because I'll make some money. But now it's a pale shadow of itself. Then the people are just not coming. <laughs> they are not coming. So mm. we need to find out. And Ayala, let us all come together. Let's find what at all is wrong. But I've, from my interactions, I need to be blunt here. Relationship between management, boards, and the supporters' leadership is also accounting for where we are today. The, you, I see you nodding a lot, uh, Ayala. Tell me, tell me about your experience along these lines and what, what you pick up on a daily basis. I think Mr. Shano just nailed it. One of the major, major solutions is organized support. And we are not getting that organized support simply because the management of football clubs today do not have that great relationship with their organized supporters. Now, I'll give you an example. Growing up in Kumasi, I was born at Bantima. Now, you wake up on a Sunday morning, that Koroko will have a game. When you are returning from church, you see buses blowing their horns, pee, pee, pee from the Santase of Wasi stretch. And what you realize is that these are supporters coming from Anya Kwanta, Bekwai, Obwasi, Santase, Patase, and those, those kind of areas. You get to Sofulai, and the supporters that are coming from the Buna Hafu stretch are also coming in with the same atmosphere, Mampong, Konongo, and all those districts. Now, when they come inland in Kumase, they will come and meet supporters group that have also made arrangements with buses 
moving from Bantima, Asafo, Astown, and all those places straight to the stadium. Now, what that meant was that the circles were very formidable, and even those that were outside the circles were organizing themselves to go. So one pool, two people alongside, and they go. And if you are even not within any of the supporters group or any friendship zone, that will take you to the stadium. Just by the atmosphere created within the streets, everyone is going. You will be tempted to follow suit. And it was simply because the management in those times had a great relationship with their supporters. Now, Mr. Fiano mentioned Ofoyiniako. We will mention Herbert Mensah. And the rest, and you have already mentioned someone like Harry Zako. These are examples of great relationship between chairman and head of management with their organized supporters. You don't see that now. Now, you don't need a research to tell you this. Every community has this culture of, 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 of consumer behavior. And when you come to Kumasi, they've had a way to consume products, including their football. You need to come to them. You need to let them know how important that they are to the club. You need to tell them how to mobilize themselves and come to the stadium. You give them updates. Till today, you go for circles meeting and you ask them, what was then being done that's not being done today? And they will tell you, oh, in those days, Herbert will come to our circles meetings. He will come and brief us on what is happening within the club and why we don't need to desert the club, why we need to be there. We need to face the, 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 the crowd with the boys and make sure that they are very, very motivated. Why there's everyone against us, but with unity, we can achieve our target. So, Herbert's fine. Kotoko wasn't glorious when it comes to winning games and winning trophies, but people were coming. Kotoko will be beaten by half the following match day at the Baba Sports Stadium, the stadium is full. And it was all because of organized support. So, I agree. One of the biggest challenges is lack of organized support, as we used to see in the past. Talk about chapter nine, talk about chapter O, talk about the musical chapters and everywhere. Everything was geared towards organized support. And we used to see the crowd there. Mr. Fiano will tell you about the shafts in Obwase and how Audu and those people from Obwase Zongo will organize themselves and motivate others from other communities within the Adansi region to also come to the stadium at the link to support us. So, there's a disconnect between management and organized support. And that is a very, very huge topic that we need to reverse it now. Still here on the Joy Sports Link on Joy 99.7 FM, hearing the thoughts of uh, Bismarck Usbenpa, who is the head of sports, uh, head of insurance sports uh, at uh, the uh, Kumasi operation, or the Ashanti operation of our multimedia operations. And he started off a campaign uh, to bring back the fans to the stadia. He started off by giving us, uh, you know, a, a full feel of the, the enormity of the problem at hand. Uh, so we could just bring back the fans. You send in a message. It's 055 In a bit, we're going to be zooming in on Ghana at the Chan and how well we can start off against uh, Madagascar. Uh, remember that the hosts, Algeria, have uh, picked up their three points uh, against Libya. They picked it up yesterday and it was live on the Joy Prime channel. We're going to bring you that game between uh, Cote d'Ivoire and Senegal later today. And tomorrow will be the big one for Ghana. Are we starting off on a good note? And how well are we starting it off? But uh, I think we just need to go around the table again uh, in looking at uh, our, our solutions and then maybe we can uh, get in there. I was asking about the alternative entertainment solutions for uh, the younger folk who uh, obviously have a lot more time to support these clubs if they are recruited. And so you're asking yourself in our metropolitan areas, in our towns, what are the competing interests? There's somebody who's uh, you know, uh, spoken about uh, what the go, getting on the betting consoles and going into the betting halls where they have access to other other leagues and other competitions, so their their attention is not there. Is that one of the cases, Ayala? Yes, I, I think so. But, but you see, not for me, what negates that point is it seems that the taste of the typical football fan is changing, and you can go into it with a normal marketing product. Look, when you come to Kumasi. The most patronized food joints are not the ones that advertise on Israel. Okay. People know their taste. They know where to go and get it. Okay. Whether if there's you food. advertising on it or not. I think the football taste is changing and okay. we should be worried. Okay. 
in the past. Yes, we used to know football made in Germany. We used to have access to the English Premier League and BBC commentary in the past. But people were still patronizing the Ghana Premier League. We should have a conscious effort to bring back that taste. Because once the taste changes, whatever you do marketing-wise, we are still going to have defects on attendance. So we must make it a conscious effort, every stakeholder listening to us today on Joy. Now look, let's use any platform that we get to talk about Ghana football and make it tasteful. It must be conscious. Can we limit the negativity? Can we talk about what is more pleasing? What is delicious about it? So that people get the appeal for the taste. If they get you don't need a huge marketing firm or a huge production money to do it. When people develop the taste for it, no matter where it is, people will go and try and get it. And you 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 hit it right. Look. We watch the English Premier League. You visit Manchester City website. And today, they've dedicated it to visiting the hospitals within the Manchester Metropolis. What they are trying to do is, let's go to the children's ward. Let's go to their schools. Let's sign autographs on exercise books as our CSRs. Let's do a campaign that is targeted to the next generation. If that guy, that kid, is as young as eight years and gets to see Jack Grealish, with him, giving him hand, signing off photograph on exercise books for him. He will not write in that exercise book, but keep it. And he will forever be indebted and support Manchester City. In fact, you immediately he gets out of the hospital, he would want to go and see Jack yeah. Grealish play. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. We yeah. don't see our clubs do that. We don't see how they exercise their social corporate responsibility. I've never in my life seen a Kotoko project, a team that visits the Confanoche Children's Ward that goes from schools in Edum to Asafo, just to go and say, we are the Kotoko you've been listening to. We are the Kotoko your father has been bombarding you with um, at home. These are the players. We love you. Grow up to be very, very good citizens of the Kotoko club. We don't inculcate that. And so if the guy go on the net and see Manchester City do it with other kids, though it's not really to him, but the person will fall in love with these clubs and they'll grow up loving these clubs. The reason why Chelsea will lose, a typical Ghanaian Chelsea fan will say, I still support Chelsea no matter what. But Kotoko will lose and he'll say, I will not go to the stadium. Is that it's the level of yeah. how committed he is to these clubs. So we must have a conscious effort to make sure these things are gradually done. It's, mm. it's doable. We need to wake up. And the solutions are there. People have raised issues with apathy with the FA. Someone doesn't like it. So he doesn't want to patronize any local no. football. That is his reason. So let's quickly make sure the league is autonomous from the FA so that the league is run by your clubs. So you don't have a party with the FA being, being linked with you going to stadium or not. So we, we have the solutions as and when the problems come. People say the players are not quality enough. The players are not quality enough because we are not trumpeting how quality they are. Yeah. You go to Ghana Premier League games, you watch talent. I was there in Kipesa against Accra House of Oak. I saw a lot of talents, a lot of them. People playing very, very good football. But when we come on air, when we get platforms to talk about football, we will decide to talk about Linda Jesse number having some plaster attached to it rather than the talent that we went to watch. It's a conscious effort. We, we, we listen to BT Sports, we listen to Skype. They have problems, but they will forget about that and talk about the positive side so that you can have an appetite and taste for their league. And when it becomes embedded in you, there is no way you can take it out. So we must all have that conscious effort to yeah. always, always present the mm. tasty side of our football. Yeah. Let, the, let the people develop back the taste for it. And no matter where it is, they will go search for it and consume it like we used to have it. Mr. Fianni wanted to add yeah, something. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, I took my second division team to a school and all the kids came out from the classroom. Then they asked, are these footballers? They said, yes. Then they asked, where is Kudus? I see. We can build the Kudus. We can build the... I, I have a goalkeeper who is 12 years. You know how they call him? No. Atiziki. I see. The kids around, they call him Atiziki. So if we can pick a player 
and make him the local artist again. Or make a player the local kudus. Give them that prominence. People will want to go and see them. You see? So it should be a concerted effort. We should all if we want this is a topic that we, we this period cannot can, can cannot contain. Mm. I played in Pando, Ashgold. We played in Pando and beat out of Lions 2 0. Once we were driving out of the stadium, I first saw a gentleman who signaled our bus to stop. We stopped. They boarded the bus and they said, Look, we are Kotoko supporters living in Pando. The mere fact that you've come from Ibuasi to discipline this troublesome club for us, take this for transport, for, for refreshment. You can imagine if it were Kotoko. So the interest is there. Let us reach out to them. You are coming to Pando to play. Get your circle in Pando to be involved in the match organization. They will continue and come to the stadium. So that is key. This management and supporters leadership relationship, we need to work on it. If we work on it, the results are there for, for, for all of us uh, to get. Let us get the we can we can build a Shamukwes locally. We can build a Joe uh, Debres locally. You still go to the stadium, and as he said, the talents are there. Let us give about quarter the time we spend on these uh, foreign guys. Ha Suarez, he says he will not come to Ghana because he's afraid of his life. <laughs> but we spend time trumpeting him. Look at the uh, the mileage you gave him before Ghana played Uruguay. As if he was coming to, he was the only player who was coming to meet Ghana. You see, so a considered effort, the media, I will continue to plead with you. We are in together. And if we give this project the next push, we'll get our people at the stadium. The lady who called, Dr. Banu Akud made the, did a research for his PhD. And what he saw was that teams that advertise at the back of the, 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 the shots of players, they attack more women than anybody else. So, that is why some clubs, they made a point that they advertise at, at the back of the shirt. They, their shorts. The shorts, okay. As I get they it. run. Yeah. You know, ladies like nice things. Yeah. So, <laughs> when we do those things, we'll get our sisters, our wives <laughs> to come to the stadium. <laughs> Elvis uh, Herman Hesse has also joined the conversation. In a bit, we'll be switching to look at Ghana's chances at the uh, ongoing Championship of African Nations uh, tournament. Uh, Elvis, uh, good to see you. I, I hope you are drinking some good uh, light soup and all and taking it easy. Yeah, Nathaniel, I'm doing very well. Um, like I told you earlier, I was, I was admitted yesterday, but... Yeah. By the grace of the Almighty God, I have. We thank God, and, and, and you are looking. God. Yeah, we thank God. God. You are looking. You you look better. So you know, get some more light soup. Uh, you know, uh, get a massage and all of Just that. Just take phobia off your mind for yeah. two days, and I'm sure you'll be fine. <laughs> Is that possible at all? Nah, you should try. <laughs> yeah, Elvis, um, we've been we've been digging through the problem, and you you sit at a very crucial place, and because of that, we we'll just want to pick your thoughts quickly, um, as how as to how we can get the the problems solved now uh there's there's a conversation about uh you know supporters bodies how they relate to managements and boards and all of that and also the fact that the supporters bodies are maybe not doing enough to reach out and expand their their base so how do we crack this code and how do we go forward yeah, thank you. Thank you very much, Nathaniel. And let me say good afternoon to your viewers, your listeners, and also to your panelists in, on, in the studio at the moment, especially my my father and my uncle, Mr. Kojo Fiano. Um, this, this issue of supporters not patronizing matches in the local league, you know, it's been a topic for discussion over the week. And I thank God that the media is showing a lot of interest in this very matter because um, at a point in time many were trying to attribute the problems to only the supporters unions or the circles and the chapters not doing their best but uh, the reality on the ground is that the situation goes beyond the NCCs of Comasia Santi Kotoko and Accra Hearts of Hope. 
it's 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 a very big issue, and I must admit that um, you guys are doing well. Uh, we are all trying to engage to find solutions to the problem. Now, I think could you, uh, Mr. Kujo Piano said a lot. The relationship between management and the NCC is a very big issue. It's a very big factor that we've got to look at. Let me tell you something, and uh, I think a year or two ago, you had an interview with Mr. Ernest Thompson, and um, I listened to you, Nathaniel, and I remember Mr. Ernest Thompson telling you that during their time in management at Accra House of Folk, they used to give even monies to the NCC for their mobilization. What it meant was that the supporters were taken very seriously. The supporters were, were part of the club, okay? They believe that uh, supporters, without the supporters, they cannot do it all alone. I am not saying that the current management or board is not doing the same or they should replicate what the old board was doing. But hey, we must admit that the relationship is not like it used to be in the past, where the old board of Accra or folk or management would say at the beginning of the season, NCC take 10,000 Ghana cities, use it for your mobilization, or the NCC will collect their dues, and at the end of the season, they will give 70 or 80 percent to the club, you know, to continue running the, 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 the club, the affairs of the club. So issues of uh, relationship is one. The refereeing factor is also a major issue. Our players also not, you know, staying in the local league for, for so many years. It's also a factor because I enjoyed watching local football more than the foreign football. And I remember very well that in the year 2000, as a very young guy, I watched all the old matches of Accra of Oak at Accra Sports Stadium. I, I, used to, I used to have the Which tickets those time. of all the old matches that I watched at Accra Sports Stadium. This is basically because you go and you see the likes of um, Ishmael Ado every week. Look, it, it, it was interesting. So, Nathaniel, we, we, we need to come together as stakeholders. And let me also appreciate the work of the minister for inviting Gaka chairman and other people. I think that the supporters front must also get involved. We, we must all try to find solutions. And I believe that uh, we, we, we will be able to solve the issue because it is not a good thing for the GPL. Mm. Well, uh, interesting thoughts you're sharing there. Um, so we're just hoping that, uh, I mean, these solutions that you have, uh, you know, you have, uh, you have, um, articulated are things that can be replicated beginning from home from uh, from Accra Hearts of Oak so that uh, we can see the supporters front uh, grow even bigger. Now we'll take the thoughts of um, Dr. Yao Osafu, the CEO of Medicas Hospital who is uh, a regular guest on our health related shows especially on Wednesdays on drive time where he addresses major health issues. Now his hospital is situated in Mampo. He just sent me this voice note on the subject we're discussing and i want us to take a listen to dr yao safo let's go Nat, good afternoon dog this um i'm just listening to you guys in the studio right now me and uh, dreams fc they play for do so equipping mampo is just a few uh, uh minutes drive to do last season beginning of last season or so i decided to go with my two uh, um, sons to go and watch a game, see whether we can adopt the team and all of that. It was such a terrible experience. One, I didn't understand why they didn't want my 13-year-old and 10-year-old to pay. Oh, we well, almost have color, made them enter. But I gave them money for three. I paid for VIP stand. It took 34 minutes after the game had started to for me to get a chair, a plastic chair in the so-called VIP stand. Plastic chair. I've never seen any publicity drive by Dreams FC on the Equipim Ridge telling us even that, oh, there's a match this weekend or, 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 or that weekend. These clubs are not making any effort whatsoever to attract anybody to watch football. Nat, good afternoon. Dog this. Um, I'm just listening to you guys. I mean, 
a, a, a consumer, somebody who wants to, uh, you know, replicate his love for football into his children so that it's going to have that uh, spread or that viral effect. Well, um, clearly, there's a lot of work to do. But just before uh, we wrap up this side of the conversation to zoom in on Chan, uh, let me ask you, uh, Ayala, um, tell me about the kind, the kind of feedback you've had generally from, uh, you know, from the industry after, you know, the massive, uh, you know, push we gave this campaign that you initiated. Not thank you very much. It has been massive, massive, and and that is an indication that people really love their football. And if things are supposed to be done very very well, people will come back and consume the product football. Now people have raised issues of infrastructure. People have raised issues of officiating. People have raised issues of security. People have raised issues of transparency. In, in our football, people have raised issues of retention of players in the league. We've spoken to CEOs who have also mentioned issues of e-ticketing. Um, people have mentioned issues of uh, timing and scheduling of our games. So we are putting together these feedbacks. And I can say emphatically that at the end of this campaign, we are engaging um, a research company and soon People will see it on my job online and all the Joy FM handles on social media and every multimedia platform where we will put an online questionnaire as to why you don't go to the stadium anymore. We will gather this data and make sure we do the data analysis and come up with the reasons why people will not go. Then we will plead with people like Kujo Fiano and the rest who are core stakeholders to come for a seminar where we will be able to tell them, based on our research, these are the problems people are raising and what the various stakeholders, being the PLB, the FA, the NSA, the ministry, and all that, that, that matters have in terms of solutions to it. So if we get them the problems, get them the feedback from those who are not coming anymore, then we will see and monitor what they do about those problems in terms of their solutions. And we will continue to hammer that you promise us to clean the stadium every time, people are still complaining of deaths at our various stadia. You mm. promise us you do, you intensify publicity on games. People are still telling us they don't hear that Kotoko is playing, Beijing. they don't hear that Hasoko is playing the Adriana and all those things. So that is where we want to get our campaign to. And to be honest with you, we are very committed to this and the feedback has been very, very good. And we are not... I'm going to relent on wherever we've got into. We will want to get to the end of it and get results that will manifest on the pitch. And for every stakeholder to realize that we all did it together and we did improve on what we thought was a big, big, big problem. We need to get our supporters back. We need to get the public interest back because the consequences are daring. That mm. is the yeah. consequence. Even the sponsor that you have, yeah. if it's a two-year contract, that. With this turnout to games, they don't get the mileage that they are supposed to get. Without public interest, nobody will want to invest in our football because yeah. they are investing to get that same public interest mm. to follow their products and, and do business with them. Very so the well. consequences of not getting the spectators there is so daring that we all need to be committed to this cause. And Very well. Things around so Very well. And talk about spectating and creating a wonderful atmosphere. One was created last night in faraway Algiers, north side of the continent. Well, time for yet another uh, Championship of African Nations and it started uh, on a winning note for the host Algeria. Uh, away from all of that, Ghana is looking forward to cracking the code of not winning that uh, tournament or not winning that trophy since it was introduced onto uh, the calendar for football. Uh, my guests are still with me and uh, I'll be picking their thoughts on um, you know, the way forward and how uh, the Black Galaxies under Coach Anna Walker, who is assisted by Dr. Uh, Prosper Natelgum, should approach this game against a side that obviously may not have the ratings but could prove a tough customer based on what uh, uh, you know countries like uh, Cape Verde and the like have taught us in re uh, previous editions of the bigger event, which is the Africa Cup of Nations. Um, Ayala, we are just about 24 hours away from, from that big game. Big game because a positive result would set our, our campaign uh, up well. 
yes, Nat, and um, <laughs> I like your introduction. And it, it goes beyond us not just winning it since 2009. We've not been qualifying at all. <laughs> We've not been making appearances at all. Mm. And if you look back in 2009, the maiden edition of the Chan and the performance of Ghana, and the previous, the the subsequent ones, how we were we were so contender to winning it, to us not making it to the turn at all, it, 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 it gives you the impression of how we be lacking behind when it comes to um, the perspective of this tournament. I was very very happy when we could do it over Nigeria to get the tickets to go. Yes, people have raised issues that the current format of CAF has also hindered us because we are supposed to now play in zones and our zones seem to be very, very difficult looking at the countries like Burkina Faso, Nigeria and the rest. It has made it very, very difficult. But you see, always I tell people that Ghana shouldn't have excuses not to appear no matter how the criteria is at these tournaments because we are a football nation, a big one as a matter of fact. And on a continent, we've been able to... in, 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 in dominate our, our, our space and everybody knows Ghana as, as a big football nation. Now, what what is very, very positive about this particular campaign is that we seem to have some level of consistency with Coach Anna Walker and Prosper Ogu and the kind of national team we've been able to build. Of course, just as many um, um, of, of these um, football nations in Africa where uh, there's a lot of issues with player headsets. Now, if you look at the chanting that we've built over the years under these same coaches, we've had to, to, to lose a lot of players um, to transfers abroad. For, for instance, even the current team that we were supposed to be in Algeria, we do not have Brighter J of Ghana because he just went to Tanzania to sign a contract. We've lost one or two quality players who were supposed to be with us. Not long ago, during the qualifiers, we had Ibrahim Moro from Kumasa Santi Kodoko. Now he's also in Tanzania playing this football. Now we don't have Budasir Salifu because he's outside, or Gestino Kran because he's outside. So we can go on and on and on. We lose players as and when we build teams for the turn. But the good thing is that we are this tournament. And preparations seems to be very, very good. We've not lost any friendly um, in terms of our preparations. We, we, we beat Ali. We've been able to draw against Algeria. We've, we've had very, very good account of ourselves and, and in terms of our preparation. Now, if you look at the quality of the team there, from the spine from Ibrahim Dalad, who was at the recent World Cup, it tells you the pedigree of the goalkeeper that we have. He was a champion on Africa when he was the goalkeeper for the under 20. He's a very, very young guy, but very experienced. And if you want to win tournaments, you need to have a very, very solid goalkeeper. It has shown through our football history. So, for me, that lad is one key factor why I am very, very expectant of this Black Galaxy team to go very, very far. Aside that, you look at our back line. The likes of Augustine, the likes of Konedu Yadom, and the rest of the other players, uh, Dennis Corsa, and the rest. These are very, very good players. Tough customers on our local league. They've been able to have their time to train with Anna Walker and Coach Prosper Ogum to, to familiarize the way they want to play. And if you watch them play, they are very, very exciting. When you go to our midfield, I think we are spot for choice in Sobela of Accra Lions, um, Razak Kasim of Olympics, Glasson Awaku, who is our captain with the Ghana Blasters, um, um, this guy Samba of Dreams FC, super, super player who is yet to explode on the international um, 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 platforms and all that. So we do have a very, very good team. We do have very, very good team that has a score very, very maintained for a long time. All that we need to pray against is complacency and, and that, that attitude of Ghanaians not starting sure. well. Yeah. We need to start very, very well against Madagascar, win that game, and then to Sudan. Then we play our last game against Morocco, who threatened to pull out, but I'm, I'm hearing that Carl has dealt with their issue. Now, the reason why we need to start very, very well is that if we don't get results against Madagascar in Sudan, we shouldn't forget Morocco are the defending champions and they've won the champ on two consecutive occasions to this, proud to this competition. And they are still very, very formidable. We all know how the Moroccan League is. It's a very, very top league and they are very, very good players. So we need to get the business done before we meet Morocco. Mm. By then we can relax and play a normal game 
then Very well. qualify to the next round and see what can happen to us. For me, any Very well. team mm. that denies Nigeria for chance should be a team that should be a real contender for the competition. And we are supporting the, the team and we know that with Anna Walker and Ogun, they are in very, very good hands to make sure they make Ghana very well. this competition. Very, very well, Bismarck. Um, I'll come to, uh, you know, um, Elvis Herman Hesse to just give me what kind of overview he thinks in terms of how the game will wrap up, especially because of the phobian interest in, uh, you know, a free year ban here. In just about, what, 15 seconds, uh, Elvis, what kind of scoreline are you expecting based on the kind of preparation you saw uh, of the Black uh, Galaxies? Yeah, I'm not. I'm, I'm expecting them to do well or even, you know, go to the finals. Uh, and my interest is is Accra out of folk. Uh, but my greatest interest is to see Ghana win the trophy. You know, we have about five players in, in that squad. Yeah. And um, uh, they, they are not just any players, but you know, they, they were doing so well. Very that well. was the reason they were invited. So very we are well. all praying, and uh, we, we believe so much that this team, this team will go very far. Thank you. So Thank you. Uh, we are expecting a win. Thank, Thank you so you. much. And uh, the final word to you, Mr. Fiano. Oh, I have the belief that they will do well. This is a, a team that has been put together, and they saved us the headache of uh, the postmortem. Why should this player be in this player? That player is out. But I think the handlers have done a very good job, and... Uh, they will come out good in this competition. That game will be live tomorrow, uh, 7 p.m. on the Joy Prime channel. And it will be Ghana going up against Madagascar in the uh, Championship of African Nations. And just before we wrap it up, we'll do this final message, which says, number one is financial difficulties. Number two, lack of publicity on match days and times. Number three, Ghanaians don't believe that our local league matches produces effort, uh, you know, with the best results. And number four, our venues don't look attractive and don't provide comfort for fans. This is from Banana. Banana, thank you so much. And apologies to all those whose messages we couldn't share with uh, all of us. Um, Emerald Elikem Kungpe is uh, ready with the Joy Headline News at two, but just before we wrap up, would like to uh, bear our hearts out to the family of uh, Mr. Frank Awuku, uh, who is one time Africa's best hockey, hockey. goalkeeper, goalkeeper yeah. and uh, was also the chief operating officer for our two major tournaments last year the championship for clubs and also the Cup for Nations. Yeah. And also to uh, the president of the Ghana Hockey Federation, Dr. Ben Asante, who's burying his sister uh, soon. Once again, on the lighter side, happy birthday to the CEO of MTN. Uh, Mr. Adadevo. Salom Adadevo. And of course, uh, Mr. Felix Mensa as well, uh, the longtime listener of Joy 99.7 FM, my cousin. So, uh, Eli Kem Kungpe will take us through the Joy headline news at two. But my name is Nathaniel Atto, and I have love for sport. <laughs>